compute the indefinite integral of the following rational function. So I have a cubic over a quartic. We'll apply partial fractions, and we'll see that our final answer has a logarithm and an inverse tangent. Now, our first step is to factor the denominator. So we apply the rational roots test to this polynomial. The only possible rational roots will be plus or minus one. So we test them. So if I put a one in, I get an eight. So one's not a root. If I put a minus one in, I get a zero. So we found one root. To do our factorization, okay, I'm gonna use synthetic division. So I know x plus one divides into here. We just need to figure out what the remaining factor is. Now, for synthetic division, we put our root here. I'm gonna put the coefficients of our polynomial in descending order of degree. So we have one, two, 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 one. Then we proceed as follows. So we drop our one. I'm gonna multiply this minus one by that one, move over to one column in the middle. We add, I get another one. We multiply over to the middle. We add, we get one, multiply over to the middle. Add again, we get one, multiply over to the middle, and then we get a zero. Now to interpret, this last term here is gonna be the remainder of the long division. So here we have that x plus one divides our polynomial evenly. The remaining factor is just gonna be given by these coefficients here. So I have x cubed plus x squared plus x plus one. So that's our first factorization. Now, we try the rational roots test again with this factor. Okay, again, the one is gonna to go to something non-zero. Minus one is gonna to go to zero. That means we can do synthetic division again. So we drop our one, multiply by minus one, we get a zero. Multiply by minus one, we get another zero. We drop, we get a one. Minus one by one gives me a minus one, we get a zero. And again, the remainder is zero, so it divides evenly. That gives us x plus one times x squared plus zero x plus one. So here's our complete factorization. Now, step two, we set up our partial fraction expansion. So our rational function is gonna be equal to the term that goes with x squared plus one. We're gonna have numerator of one degree less, so I have ax plus b for x plus one squared, okay, we're gonna need two terms, one for x plus one squared and one for x plus one. So this is the partial fraction expansion that we work with. Next step, we clear out the denominators. So we'll multiply both sides by x squared plus one, x plus one squared. With our denominator cleared, we can work with this equation to solve for a, b, c, and d. Now, our strategy is to pick points for x that make most of our terms go away. So for instance, if I let x be equal to minus one, okay, on the right-hand side, we work it out and we get six. On this side, this term goes away, this term goes away, so I'm left with two c, and we have that c is equal to three. Now, there aren't gonna be any other obvious points to pick here, so I'm just gonna go with x equal to zero. So that'll give us, okay, we'll have a nine, and then just b plus c plus d, and we'll save this for later. Now, if I've run out of good points, you have two options. One, you can pick any other two points and just see what happens, or you could take the derivative of both sides of your equation and then try your old points over again. So if we take the derivative of both sides, okay, we're gonna wind up getting this new equation, it's kind of a mess, but that's not a problem. I try our points again. So I'll try the minus one. So we're gonna lose this term, this term, this term. So what does that give me? When we put minus one in, we're gonna have two equals minus two C plus two D. I know that C is equal to three. So it's gonna give me D equals four. Now, we have C and D. So that means I can solve for B we get b equal to two, then I just need to find a. So we'll just take this equation here and we'll try zero again. That gives me 
Okay, we have nine equals a plus, okay, four plus four, which gives me a equal to one. And now we can write out our partial fraction expansion. Of course, we wanna check our work before we integrate. So two options. One, you could just recombine everything, put it over a common denominator. Make sure you get back your original rational function. If time is an issue, just evaluate your function at a few points. So for instance, if I take x equal to zero, for the partial fraction expansion, we get two plus three plus four. In the original function, I get a nine. So that checks out. If I try x equal to one, in the original function, we get 34 over eight. In our partial fraction expansion, we get three halves plus three fourths plus four over two. That checks out also. Final step, we integrate. So if we split the first fraction, we have four integrals to deal with. In our first case, I notice derivative of x squared plus one is two x. So this is almost in the form f prime over f. So I'm gonna let u be equal to x squared plus one, and this integral contributes one half natural log absolute value of x squared plus one. For our second term, okay, I note this is gonna be the type of function that goes with inverse tangent. So we let x be equal to tangent of u. When you work it out, we get the term two inverse tangent of x. Third term, we have three x plus one to the minus two, which goes to minus three x plus one to the minus one. And our last term, four x plus one to the minus one, which goes to four natural log absolute value of x plus one. Now, take our four terms, we combine, and that gives us our indefinite integral. Of course, you check your work. So we won't do this here, but what would you do? We would take the derivative of our answer. That'll give us, hopefully, our partial fraction expansion back. We combine all our terms, put them over a common denominator. And then we have to check that we get our original function back.